There was some unrest in the Montenegrin capital Podgorica last night following an anti-government rally organized by the pro-Serbian opposition alliance Democratic Front that is seeking the resignation of Prime Minister Milo Djukanovic. The police say under 5,000 people took part, while some media are saying there were three times that number. The protesters threw flares at the police, who responded with tear gas. Since mid-September, more than 241,000 refugees and economic migrants have entered Croatia, almost all of them moving on to Austria and Germany. Yesterday, a record-breaking 11,500 entered the country. There is an almost constant flow of buses arriving at Croatia's eastern border with Serbia. From there, refugees are taken to the Opatovac reception centre, where they are registered and then transported on to the Slovenian border. There continues to be a big migrant build-up on the Slovenian border. On Saturday, more than 7,000 refugees entered Slovenia and there isn't sufficient space in Slovenia's reception centres. People are having to wait a long time before being able to continue their onward journey. Representatives of 10 European states are meeting in Brussels today with the aim of agreeing on European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker's 16-point plan. The plan's goal is to offer support to countries on the so-called Balkan migration route, and one of the proposals is that countries no longer transport refugees to neighbouring countries without consulting them in advance. Croatia's Prime Minister Zoran Milanovic has said that Croatia will not agree to any obligations arising from the Brussels meeting, emphasising that the problem has to be solved at its source, meaning in Greece and Turkey. He expressed doubts about a plan put together by well-paid bureaucrats in Brussels, especially as it assumed that refugees would stay where they were told to, which Milanovic said was completely unrealistic. And after a meeting with his Serbian and Romanian counterparts, Bulgarian Prime Minister Bojko Borisov announced yesterday that Bulgaria, Serbia and Romania had agreed to jointly close their borders to migrants the moment Germany, Austria or some other country closed theirs. This would bring an end to the Balkan migration route, which has mostly been used by refugees trying to escape the civil war in Syria. The clocks went back an hour in Croatia at 3 a.m. last night, signalling the country's entry into so-called winter time. From now on until the spring, motorists are required to have their headlights on during the day as well as during the night. Sport and in World Cup skiing, the men's giant slalom is being held in the Austrian resort of Sölden today. After the first run, American Ted Ligeti is in the lead, with Austrian Marcel Hirscher in second and Thomas Fanara of France in third. Croatian skier Filip Zubcic is in 14th place, while Max Ulrich is 43rd. In tennis, Croatia's Marin Cilic this afternoon will attempt to retain his title at the ATP tournament in Moscow. The final against Spaniard Roberto Batista will be a repeat of last year's. And in football, after two years, splits Hajduk are again top of the Croatian league after defeating Lokomotiva 2-1 at home. They have 29 points after 14 rounds, but have played one more game than Rijeka and Dinamo, who play each other today in Rijeka. Meanwhile, Inter recorded a convincing victory over Istra at home in Zaprasic. The score was 3-0. Today, Zagreb and Split also face each other. There will continue to be fog and low-lying cloud in places this afternoon, although in most inland regions and on the coast it will be sunny with moderate, cloudy spells. Winds will be mostly weak, while on the coast there will be a light to moderate northwesterly wind. Highest daily temperatures will be between 17 and 22 degrees Celsius on the coast and in the Dalmatian and Istrian interiors, while in most inland regions it will be between 14 and 17 degrees. For the next few days there could be some lingering fog in places inland, although sunny periods are expected on Monday and on Wednesday afternoon. On Wednesday evening it will cloud over and there could be a little rain in higher regions. On the coast, it'll be mostly sunny until Wednesday. On Monday morning, there'll be a moderate to strong northeasterly Bura wind, after which winds will be light until Wednesday, when a southeasterly Yugo wind is expected, which will bring with it clouds and a little rain on Wednesday afternoon and evening along the northern coast.